Hi everybody, this is in response to the feedback from my dam removal video as well as some additional thoughts that I have involving the subject. In this video, I will address some of the comments, concerns, and perspectives from viewers, farmers, and locals experiencing the negative impacts of this dam removal. I'm going to start with some responses from local perspectives. I watched some videos of people who are viewing the recent dam removal in Oregon as a bad situation. I saw videos of the dam removal and how it was hurting wildlife, animals getting stuck in the silt, as well as the short staff of workers unavailable to help at every square meter of the vast land affected by the consequences of this dam removal. Some people were sad for the animals that were affected and of course the loss of the beautiful view provided by the dam they had grown so accustomed to. The land of course is changing and won't look the same in a few years time, in a decade. This beautiful view that was provided by the dam may never have compared to the natural ecosystems that dwelled along the river and riparian communities before the construction of the dam, but this is where I can see some limited perspectives. While some people weep over the animals affected by the dam removal, were those same people anywhere to be found to speak up for the animals that were negatively impacted because of the dam. The colossal impact to the nature, to the animals, to the native people because of the dam seem to escape the view of those who only see catastrophe when it disturbs their way of life. I also noticed that people who are commenting against the dam removal don't appear to display any knowledge of the harms and history of dam infrastructure to the environment, to the animals, to the native people. And I think that's where the disconnect is. I will not repeat how harmful dams can be because that was outlined in my previous video, but for those who still don't understand how harmful modern dams can be, I encourage you to go watch that video, check out the bio, I put resources down in there. You are much better off educated than not. I want everybody to understand that dam removal is a huge project that requires many hands. If you think that people aren't doing enough, Get off your sorry butt and help. There are volunteer opportunities, so I encourage people to help out as they can. And a message to the people out there that need to hear this. If you are only concerned when catastrophe affects you, but enjoy the benefits of a dam at the expense of others, then you are not the victim. The First Nation people, the nature, the animals have been suffering because of these dams. Be part of the solution not the problem. So now in response to all those farmers who are currently facing hardship, struggling because they don't have enough water for their farms, particularly the small local organic farms that are the life of our community. I think it's completely wrong that Big Ag is trying to control the water and growing unsustainably while our small farmers that actually care for the land suffer. It's tyranny. It's going to take all of our voices and direct action to take back our power from these corrupt industries. Let's not fight each other. The First Nation people and farmers need to work together against these polluting corporate profiteers. And I may not know the right approach or the right answer to solve everyone's individual problems, but I do know we need to be more self-sustainable and self-sufficient. We need to work together as communities and harvest our own water, focus and support small-scale, regenerative, organic, polyculture agriculture. Just like people, plants work better together. And we need to protect our water resources from pollution, from factory farms, from overuse, and from unsustainable infrastructures like dams, which do more harm to our community than good. I encourage communities to work together, for farmers to reach out to their communities, for help, for assistance, for building water harvesting projects, creating swales and ponds for water storage. If you think you have the expertise, please offer your assistance. I think I've mentioned Don Tipping before of Siskiyou Seeds. He works with the land to collect, store, and harvest water in a sustainable way that helps in times of drought. And there are other technologies as well. You just really have to look around and see what works for you and your situation. I don't want to see all these small farmers disappear. We have to stand up to big ag. We have to stand up to large scale agriculture. I'll put resources in the bio for water collection and storage techniques. Please feel free to add some of your own in the comments so we can share resources. There of course is no one size fits all solution for everybody's circumstance. So I encourage you to look around and see what farms in your area are doing because somebody is doing something that works so it's just a matter of adjusting to the technology and learning what works for you and your circumstance there are many factors that contribute to the water shortage we are currently experiencing in certain parts of our world so we have to be resilient think of the future and make smart decisions so that we don't fudge ourselves over any more than we already have i don't know why someone would think this but dams do not create more water they just redirect it 
And additionally, they rob water from river systems and other freshwater sources that are already being used by other people, drying up lakes and rivers and riparian ecosystems and contaminating our freshwater sources. There's also evidence that millions of gallons of water can be lost to evaporation due to the surface areas that the reservoirs of the dams create. Please don't ignore the science, look at the whole picture, the little things really do add up and make a huge difference. Alright, now on to some responses to the video comments, and a big thank you to everyone who actually gave this some deep thoughts. Remember, just because we learn to adapt our lifestyle to dams doesn't justify their existence. In response to some people's perspectives, I kind of get the idea that some people just can't imagine a world without dams, but I want to remind those people that we as humans are an innovative species. We can come up with better, safer, and more sustainable solutions. That may mean that some people will have to change their habits and adjust their lifestyles, but is that really too much to ask? I'm not talking about the farmers, but it still goes both ways. Because in respect to most Americans, it's really difficult to convince people to change. They will often make excuses and do whatever they can to not put in any effort at all. They like things just how it is, and they can't see beyond their limited perspective. Those are the people hardest to educate because their very ways of interacting with the world is based on selfishness and applying the least amount of effort. This is understandable living in a world that sucks the life out of you. But no one should ever be in need. Everyone should have their basic needs met. We can have our needs met sustainably and conveniently. It's just hard to get there when the herd of mindless laymen are dragging their feet. Okay, so we also had a lot of people say that dams were good, but they couldn't justify their existence over the environmental and humanitarian costs. And if you think that you can, put it in the comments. There were also many short-sighted comments that were made thinking that we need to abandon all modern conveniences. Successful transition takes time, although if you want to go to that extreme, I won't stop you, but it's not necessary. Once we have those better solutions in place, then it will automatically overwrite the unsustainable solutions. That's just part of the transition process. Somehow people think that without modern agriculture and dams that we have to lead an inconvenient life where we're wiping our butts with leaves and freezing in the winter. Again, a symptom of lack of imagination, innovation, and probably a broken spirit. Because let's face it, we live in a society where the controllists want us to believe that their technology is the only way to live. Live by their way or die. I think that was most people's fear. They couldn't see a sustainable future, so they automatically thought the worst, something they inevitably can imagine. But if some benefit while most people suffer, then it's not a sustainable system and it needs to change. Although part of that presentation was my fault because I didn't provide any alternatives, so I will be providing that later, but first I want to touch on population. Because that's also another significant factor to this conversation, which has everybody worrying about, can we provide for everyone? But the truth is, we already aren't providing for everyone. We still have poverty in our world with these modern technologies. These modern technologies, which are failing and threatening our global food security. Because it all cycles back, you can't just expect to keep taking and taking and taking from the land, not giving back, and expect that everything's gonna be okay. Okay, so population, we need to address the conversation of unsustainable populations and congested cities filled with poverty and food insecurity. We already have people that are not getting enough. We need to address the controversial subject of overpopulation. People don't want to talk about it because they think our world is limitless and believe that people should have all the babies that they want without any consequences to our planet or natural resources. But I have news for those people, the land can only give so much. There are limits to how many people it can sustain sustainably. That's the key word. I'm willing to believe that many people are not the problem and it's mostly just how congested they are and how uneducated and emotionally mature that they are. Because I do believe that if we had more sustainably minded, educated and emotionally mature people in the world, I think large populations on the planet would not be so much of a concern. But even with that, there's still a cap. Where that cap is, I cannot say. But considering the poverty and food insecurity that people are suffering from today, I think that more people added to the world doesn't make sense until we can actually take care of the ones that are already here. What do you think? Okay, now let's talk about solutions and I'm going to jump into power because we live in a somewhat advanced society, but we are seemingly dependent on unsustainable resources and those resources are dwindling like fossil fuels, which pollute our world and are being used up. 
and the forests which provide and clean our fresh water and give us clean air. All of those are being cut down, which is altering our local and global climate. So where do we turn to to power our homes, our vehicles, and heat our homes in the winter, etc.? Well, I believe that we have that technology, but big industries are preventing that release to the public. So the solution to that is to pressure politicians to bring sustainable energy to our communities. Or we just have to do it ourselves. We can't really rely on them anymore. Our community engineers are just going to have to be rebels and start creating hydrogen power generators for our cars and rediscover how to harness etheric energy. I am not one of those engineers. It is not my area of expertise, yet it is desperately needed getting permission just do it and share it with your community we're all rebels now but aside from that here's some simple things that most anyone can do consumer activism changing lifestyle habits to reflect sustainability and educating yourself not everyone has to farm but anyone that is a consumer has the power to change the direction of the consumer market demand you can choose sustainable options whenever you can you can buy local buy organic and support regenerative agriculture etc if you can compost, do it. If you can have an outhouse on your property, do it. Grow your own food, harvest your own water. Do what you can do instead of complaining about what you can't do. I guarantee you that there's something that you can do to make a positive difference in this world. It's just up to you to decide what that is. And especially reach out to your community because I guarantee you there's someone out there that's doing it better than you're doing it. There's someone out there that can help you optimize your life. So connect with your community and work together to find solutions. Don't let people's limiting ideas dictate our collective future. Just because they can't imagine it, doesn't mean that it can't be done. So there are experts out there that can lay out way better plans than I can, but I do want to remind you that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. The hard part is getting people to see the harm first because no one's going to get on board with change if they don't think that there's anything to change to begin with. Rewind that part. People won't change if they don't think there's a reason to change. So that's what a lot of my videos are about, educating the public and helping open people's eyes to the reality of our existence. So to clarify my stance, I advocate for a sustainable future because I believe that we can do better. Yes, I have a cell phone and I use the toilet and drive cars. If there were any sustainable, affordable power options, I would have it. And even if I did have it, I would still be advocating it until everybody had equal access to power because everyone deserves to have their basic needs met and power is a part of that. We are all capable of, worthy of and deserve our basic needs met. We can have convenience and we can have a sustainable future. So I like this quote that I came up with. I think it sums up this conversation really well. All in all, if people don't want to listen, they won't. If people are not compatible intellectually with the concepts, then they won't understand the information. All the proof in the world will not mean anything to the mind that cannot grasp the evidence and the ego that refuses to hear reason. Despite how sassy I can be, I really do care about the people and the planet, and it hurts me to see others in pain. So all these feelings come from a place of love, and I hope that you can see that. Thank you for everyone who contributed to the conversation. I really enjoyed talking to a handful of you that really put thought into your answers and responses. I challenge everyone to think for yourself, to think big, to think outside the box. Lastly, I don't think that some people should benefit far more while others don't benefit at all. I am of course referring to corporations and big businesses that take from the land and the people, leaving lack and hardship. Fuck this unsustainable system of inequality. Power to the people, people over profits. Basic needs met for all. Land back, live long and prosper.